Hello and welcome to IFA Insider. I'm Emma Ryan of Action81.com and this will be our weekly look at American football across the island. We're going to be here looking at the games week to week all the way up to the Shamrock Bowl in the summer and this week we're going to be focusing particularly on the games between the Belfast Trojans and Craig Haven Cowboys and between the Dublin Rebels and the Dublin Rhinos. But first we're going to talk a little bit about the history of American football on the island of Ireland. The game's been here for over 70 years. There was a game between servicemen from the US in Belfast in 42, but it didn't really take off as a, a, a playing basis until the mid-80s when, of course, the NFL and college football started being shown on Irish and British TV. And from there, the first league was born, and the Craig Evan Cowboys beat the Dublin Celts in the first ever Shamrock Bowl, Shamrock Bowl 1. That was 6-0 back in 1986. Well, it's still going strong 27 years later, and there are now nine teams playing across the island in the Shamrock Bowl Conference, as well as a development league, IFL 1. That division doesn't start for another two weeks, so we're going to start off by looking at this weekend's action. The UL Vikings beat UCD 11-0 in their game, but we're going to start off by talking to the Belfast Trojans' Alan Orr, their special teams coach, about their victory 46-13 over the Craig Evan Cowboys. Alan, your first game of the season as defending Shamrock Bowl champions. Just talk us through what you guys did, I suppose, on offense that really worked out well for you against Craig Evan. Um, well, we started off very slowly in the first five minutes. We uh, obviously we let Craig Avon put a put a score on the board, and uh, I think that woke up the guys a wee bit. Uh, certainly, uh, what we have found always in every start of every season is the first games very crucial to get up and running an offense. And uh, again, it was a rusty start, but uh, obviously we came back very strongly um, after that drive, I say, uh, McKelvey walked the team up the field a bit. And uh, overall, the first half performance uh, all round was, was, was pretty good. Um, again, we can't complain. It was really just shaking off the rust. I suppose just for people who aren't used to seeing the Trojans play, because obviously you, you, you wouldn't have too many guys seeing you in action when they're not playing against you. What sort of an offense do you guys run? Are you run heavy, pass focused? What, what way do you run to play the game? Yeah, well, basically, it's very much a mixed bag. We've been very fortunate this year that Jerome Egg now is uh, taking off the helmet and he's on the sidelines and he's trying to mix things up a bit. I mean, really what we're doing is we're watching what other teams are doing and changing our offense to suit that. Of course, Jerome's very experienced as a line man at NCAA level with you before he was uh, playing at Belfast. So like, how, how's he helping out for you guys? Um, the experience is immense. I mean, you know, the guy's been around uh, at, at, at you know such a high level, um, and I think what he does is he brings a calmness to to the team, which uh, we're we're very glad to have. I mean, at times even when he was on the pitch, just to see him pulling the helmet on and going and to settle things down uh, made such a difference, and it has done. But this time, uh, really, with him being on the sidelines, he just has that calming effect. Um, you know, there's no complacency but uh, he certainly does bring something different to the team. Of course, after that early score that Craig Evan managed against you, it was pretty much a defensive clinic. Like, What did you guys do to shut them down after going behind early? Um, well, again, it was just that we, we decided, we knew where the main threat was going to come from. Um, and again, it was, as I said to you earlier on, it was really just the guys settling themselves down for the first game. Um, we just tried to mix the players up a bit. We do have a very good running game. Uh, we've got a good depth of runners, um, and to say that even our star running back, Mr. Colvin, uh, wasn't really needed uh, at that stage. I mean, certainly Alex Newton and Gary Carr, uh, you know, put the pressure on them a bit. But uh, James was in good form, and as I say, you know, five TDs on the offense overall. McKelvey thrown for four touchdowns. Um, good day, but, you know, we know we have to keep improving. Uh, with a tough game coming up in two weeks' time. That's probably going to be a bigger test for us. But uh, as I say, we've got a good playbook and uh, the guys in the, in the team at the minute really putting a lot of effort in learning it, which is paying off. And of course, this is your season. You're defending Summer Bowl champions after. It was a long road for the Trojans really getting there. What are you guys doing maybe different this year to what you did last year to try and retain the title in, in 2013? Um the main difference really has been the fact that now the head coach, uh, Drew Mikhail and Jerome Egg there are, are really putting a lot of effort into what's going on off the pitch with the, with the playbook and drilling the players. Uh, last year we probably suffered a bit because it was a bit of the, we had the players, coaches, etc. And again on the sideline, that was probably our, one of our weaknesses um, if, if we had one. I, I think in general, we just as an organisation are just trying to push ourselves to the limit of what we can actually do 
Um, and there's no magic formula. I think really what, what's impressed me is the respect that we've had from our peers uh, within the league who are now looking up to us. And we just want to continue to raise the bar and try and improve the standard in the league generally. Um, you know, we've really had a great season uh, beyond maybe our expectations in some respect, going unbeaten. And to follow up on that, um, you, know, you know how it is, Emmett, everybody's going to be looking that we're, we've got targets on our back. Um, and it's really just making sure that we're 20% better than everybody else. And one last thing before you go, because I just really want to touch on the way you've got the government player coaches to dedicated coaches. Because I know myself in my brief playing days, I often had coaches playing on the line with me. What's the difference in having the coaches fully dedicated to coaching rather than in that player coaching role? What, what, how does it improve the, the Trojans, I suppose? Um, it's reading the game. Um, I think before when a guy's running on and coming off and, and trying to watch what's happening, I think it just gives the coaches a better overall picture, certainly watching the players and seeing how the players are reacting, uh, which, again, you can't obviously see when you're on the field, the guys in, you know behind you, what they're actually up to. But, uh, no, I think, again... Complacency, you know, people say with with having such depth um, throughout the team, you know, are there going to be guys getting complacent? Uh, you know, the coaches won't let them do that. I mean, one thing I'll say for 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 Coach Me Kyle, the drive that that guy has got, and I think he will give us the extra ten percent this year straight off the bat. Um, but the, the the guys have responded. I mean, the off season training's been phenomenal. Um, we went to Craig Avon. We were missing maybe. I'd say nine players that would have got on that team as first starters. So there's a lot more in the tank and what it's really going to do is push us on. I mean, the fact that um, the actual guy that we give the MVP to uh, was a rookie, uh, a Johnny McConnell just proves what the depth has been. And as I said, the coaches have really been pushing the guys through preseason. Um, and, and for that fella, they actually walk away with the MVP in his first game, uh, you know, that, that's the depth we have, and I think that's where maybe teams are going to struggle against us this year. Well, Alan, that's been a, a, a great talking to you. Thanks for joining us on IFA Insider on our debut episode, and I hope to hear from you guys at the Trojans in a couple of weeks' time again. Great. Thanks very much. Pleasure talking to you. That was Alan Orr of the Belfast Trojans. The Dublin Rhinos had their first game of the season, losing 22-0 at the hands of Dublin Rebels. I spoke with Barry Bolton, left tackle with the Rhinos, to see what went right and what went wrong for the Rhinos in their opening game of the year. Barry, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on it. Well, Barry, obviously I know it was a defeat. It was a tough game for you guys. But before we get to sort of what went wrong, I just want to ask about what went right. Is there anything that stood out for you about positive aspects of the performance from the Rhinos on Sunday? Yeah, I, th- I think there's a lot we can take from the game. I mean, it's always tough coming away with a loss, especially when you know you get shut out and you, you don't put any points on the board. But... You know, if if we look at it from a different point of view, there was three quarters of football where the the scoreline was was nil all. Um, you know, we gave up three touchdowns in the second quarter, and we we couldn't come back from that. And you know that that was the negative. But on the plus side, we did shut the the rebels out for three quarters, and you know we had a, a good few a good few drives where we moved the ball into their field position, and with some good special teams, we pinned the rebels' offense back inside drone. In the inside round goal line, around five ten yard line, and that that helped us as well on defense. Um, you know, there was one punt where I think we we downed on the three yard line, and they had to play out their own end zone then at that stage. And little things like that um, were, were positive for us. There wasn't like like I say, you, you want to put points on the board, you want to come away with a win, but when you don't, you have to look at what you did successfully. And another thing we did is we we came away winning the turnover battle. Um, we protected the ball fairly well. We had one interception that we threw we threw when a one of our receivers slipped on a route, and you know we came away with an interception of our own and a, a fumble recovery as well. So there's a couple of things where we came out on top, but unfortunately it wasn't on the scoreline. I was looking at the scoreline then. Rebels managed to get a 22 nil lead up by the half. What was it that went wrong for you guys defensively, or was it a field position issue really that cost you that for those those scores? Yeah, it was partially uh, field position. Um, when the Rebels punted the ball to us late in the first quarter, we were backed up on our own goal line as well. Uh, and after a quick three and out, we were forced to, to punt the ball back to the Rebels. So they started their first score and drive around about midfield, which made things easier. 
the the main problem we had on Sunday was um, we weren't expecting, well, not that we weren't expecting, but we were up against a strong running game from the Rebels, um, stronger than they've had in, in previous years. Um, they put Simon Mackey back at running back, who's a big bruiser of a runner. And it, it took our defense a while to be to climatize to having how to tackle such a, a powerful runner. Um, you know, you could see evidently from the sideline where early in the game people were trying to tackle him up high and were failing miserably. And you know, after a few times when you realise this isn't working, um, you know, and the the coaches had their say in it that. Uh, the players eventually picked up. Well, look, we have to go lower on this guy and take him down. And eventually, after a bit of practice and a bit of a uh, bit of change up in the in the huddle and on the sideline, we managed to come up with a better better system to stop the running game. And from there, we kind of went strength to strength on defense. And after a bad second quarter, we we stopped them scoring for the rest of the game. I suppose obviously you're an offensive line man, uh, like I used to be back in my uh, brief playing days. What were the looks you were getting from the Rebels that day? Like, what were you dealing with more? Was it pass coverage, run coverage? What were you having to do? Sorry, uh, sorry, run, run coverage, sorry. Was it, were you doing more pass blocking, run blocking? What were you having to deal with in terms of the Rebels? Were they blitzing a lot? Yeah, they weren't blitzing as much as they would have done in previous years, I found. Um, like, at left tackle, I'm usually out there on my own. You might have help from a running back if there's pressure from the outside. But there, there was a, a few blitzes here and there. It, it wasn't as as strong as, as I've seen from them in the past. Um, but I think that was part of it. They, they were keeping more guys in coverage for when we, we threw the ball. Um, they weren't committing too many players to the blitz. Some, sometimes they only sent four, the four linemen rather than any linebackers as pressure. And, you know, it, it made things easier for us to block up the front, but it made it harder for a quarterback to, to pass the ball and gain success and get success in the air. And obviously, Barry, one of the things you guys love to do this year is take the next step and make it to the postseason, make it to the playoffs. What do you think you guys are doing different in 2013 from 2012 that will help you get there? Yeah, well, we don't want to change too much from last year. I mean, last year we, we finished 4-4. Four and four. Uh, It's the best record we've had since the team started a couple of years ago. And from there, we, you know, we, we made it to the wildcard game uh, where we lost to the, the Carrick Ferguson Knights. Um, so we'd be aiming for something around the same, you know, a four and four finish, uh, possibly back into the wildcard game and maybe the semi finals, the, the Shamrock Bowl, depending on how the season progresses. Um, you know, we have a new quarterback this year. We lost our, our long time quarterback last year to Australia. Um, and, we, you know, we're slowly making changes and the offense is kind of settling into his style. So. It, it'll just take a couple of games for everything to settle down and become a, a routine and become automatic for everyone. And so just finally, because obviously you're alignment, so the relationship with the quarterback is very important, what's the difference in the style you guys are doing from quarterback play this year to last year? And like, what are you guys having to adjust with on the line? Well, when we lost our starting quarterback, Stephen Mackin, last year, um, he was more of a, a pocket passer. He'd drop back. Um, you know, we'd always equate him to to like Ben Roethlisberger. He'd be a, a big guy. He can drop back. He can take a hit, and he can he can dodge a hit. And we've gone that direction now with our new quarterback, Aaron. But in the interim between when we lost Stephen Macken last year and where we are now, uh, we had faster, smaller guys and more of a scrambling type, was it? Yeah, yeah, more where you know they'd be rolling out of the pocket trying to find a quick pass or pulling the ball down and running down the field, which as a lineman is difficult to, to block for because you're expecting him to be in one position and next second he's somewhere completely different. So uh, it, it's easier to block for a pocket pass. You know where he's going to be. Uh, you know where the defense is going to be aiming for him. So you know who you should be blocking and where you should be blocking them. Uh, so it, it's easier now that you have a, a pure pocket passer who you can uh, you can drop back and protect. Well, Barry, listen, that's been great. Thanks for joining us on our debut episode of IFA Insider. And hope to hear from you again later this, later this season. No problem at all. Thanks for having me again. Emmett. That was Barry Bolton of the Dublin Rhinos. And that pretty much brings an end to our first show here on IFA Insider. We're just going to have a quick look now at the games coming up this week in the IFA in the Shamrock Bowl Conference. We have the Carrick Fergus Knights at the Rhinos again. And we have Trinity College at UL Vikings, the season opener for Carrick Fergus and Trinity, respectively. 
Now, with this show, it is our first week, and obviously we're still finding our way and trying to work out what you guys want to hear. So we really want you to get in touch with us. Tweet me at Action81, or get in touch with the American Irish American Football Association across its various channels on Facebook, on its website, AmericanFootball.ie, and of course on Twitter as well. We really want to hear from you guys. Let us know, and feel free to contact me personally on Twitter. Let us know what you want to hear on the show, what you want there to be, and just so we can make a show that you guys are into. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, who's someone who's got no interest at all until literally this second in American football, or if you're someone who's been watching American football for 30, 40 years, been playing for 15. We really want a good broad spread of opinions. So tweet me, like I said, Emmett Ryan, I'm at Action81, and get in touch with the guys in the IAFA. Let us know what you want to think. But thank you very much for listening to our first show on IAFA Insider.